What up YouTube? This video was taken on this Wednesday afternoon, July 2nd, 2014. Time right now is 1.02 p.m. So, this is going to be hopefully a laptop repair video. Uh, my mom bought this laptop new. Um, probably a year, uh, no, it actually probably been a year and a half ago, two years ago. And then somehow this laptop got a virus on it so my parents took it to this friend who was a computer expert laptop came back and I don't know if it came back not working or if it came back uh, it was really messed up but apparently but eventually it became not working so uh, uh, they couldn't do anything with it so I'm gonna give it a try uh, repairing it and hopefully that way I'll end up having a decent laptop. It runs Windows 7. It has an Intel i3 inside. It's a Dell Inspiron. Uh, let's see, 50 N Inspiron N5010. So let me show you what it's doing first. So when you power it up. This is what happens. It just comes to this screen and doesn't do anything. So, as you can see, it went through BIOS. So, I don't know if I can do this. You can enter BIOS. So, you see, I'm in BIOS. No problem. So, it has an i3 200 or 2.53 gigahertz. Well, let's see. It has uh, four gigabytes of memory, and it has a 500 gigabyte hard drive. So, there's also another menu before you go into BIOS. If you hit, uh, oh, didn't get it. So BIOS is F2 and it says boot menu is F12 I didn't get it oh. why am I not getting it? I got it before you see on these you had to hit FN and nope didn't get it okay let me just try not hitting F and let me try hitting F12. Okay, there we go. So we're in boot menu, so you can select what you're going to boot from. So now uh, there's the diagnostics. I never heard of diagnostics before. So it goes through, and I already did this, basically making a long version short. Uh, when it gets to. When it gets to the hard drive, it fails, which is what I was... I didn't know if the hard drive was bad or if the guy wiped off uh, the Windows hard drive. So you see, it had a hard drive self-test failure previously. And I'm just going to exit out of this. So it gives a hard drive failure in diagnostics. I didn't know if... Obviously, it lost the any bootable disk. I didn't know if the hard drive went bad or if the hard drive got wiped. But according to diagnostics, uh, the hard drive is bad. And uh, at home, this was back in Maryland, I could only find a Windows XP disk, so I stuck a Windows XP disk in and tried to get it to boot into the Windows XP disk, and it would not boot. It would always do this. So that part scares me a little bit because I would think that even if the hard drive was bad, I would be able to at least boot up to the Windows XP install disk. But I decided to take my chances and I bought a hard drive and the hard drive came in today. So it uses a SATA hard drive and the one in it is a three gigabytes a second or is it gigabytes? You see I'm not good with all these uh, units. But anyway this one's six. But it should be backwards compatible and uh, this one's 750 gigabytes. This is a Western Digital Black series. The one in here, I already opened it up, is a blue series. 
And uh, I did a preliminary Google search, and it seems like I'm not the only one who had a hard drive crash in this uh, desktop. I got this off of Newegg.com for 60 bucks. Um, like for you could have gotten one a 750 for 50 bucks. The Blue Series. This is the Blue Series, but there is a lot of uh, ones where the blue, they say the Blue Series fail. I used the Black Series in that PC I built that everyone uh, ridicules me on how I built it, but you can check out that video. So and I had good luck with Black Series, and they give five year warranties on Black Series. So I figured for ten dollars more. I'll just get the Black Series. So let's open this up and uh, change out the hard drive. So there is a, already a video on YouTube of how to take these laptops apart. Um, oh, almost dropped the camera there. The guy in here is the memory. I mean, yeah, the the RAM, the memory. Uh, the guy takes that out in the video. I don't think you had to take that out, but basically you got to take out uh, these all these screws here. And uh, these are actually screwed into the silver plate by the keyboard. And then you see these four screws here? These four screws are actually holding the hard drive in. So it's hard to film. I'm just going to go ahead and take it apart. You can watch that video if you want to know how to take it apart in more detail. So there's little like uh, door locks here that you had to push back and then, then the keyboard will pop out. And then there's a ribbon cable. On these ribbon cables, you just take that black tab and you lift it up. And then you see this black tab here just lifts up. And then there's a couple of ribbon cables you gotta take off. And then, oh yeah, and then there's more screws here. Okay, took all the screws out, took the four screws out for the hard drive. Hard drive just lifts up and slides out. So it's now time to, uh, so that's it. Now it's time to install the new hard drive. One thing that scares me, this is a little, damn. What the hell? That was a little loose. Damn, that connector was loose. Christ. Now I don't want to put that new hard drive in. Okay, hold on. I'll be back. Okay, I guess it's a false alarm. I put the hard drive back in, reseated that connector that was loose, power button, and it's doing the same thing. So it probably is the hard drive. Either that or something. I'm afraid that something burnt out on the motherboard side for the SATA. Okay. So, I'll replace the hard drive. Just for the hell of it, before I close it back up, I put the new hard drive in. I'm just going to go and see if it does anything different. It's doing the same thing, but I can feel... Oh, look. Reboot and select proper boot device. Or insert boot media. It wasn't doing that before. I can feel the hard drive turning in here. So it definitely was the hard drive. So I'm gonna put this all back together and then it'll be on to Windows 7. So replacing the hard drive was the easiest part. The hardest part is the when you buy these new uh, computers, they don't give you a operating system disk like they did when you were buying XP laptops. Uh, they don't give you anything. You just have the product code mounted on the bottom of the laptop or the product key. So you had to go on the internet and search for an ISO file and there's a this X17 number that dictates the different uh, versions of Windows 7 well the one on the bottom of my laptop you can't find anywhere on the internet and then someone said that that uh, version to just the you know the Dell branded Windows 7 and that if you just use a regular uh, Windows 7 home premium uh, ISO file that product key will work. So I downloaded uh, Windows 7 Home Premium 64-bit ISO file. Then you had to download this Windows 7 USB DVD download tool from Microsoft. And now I'm uh, it's taking that ISO file and making this uh, flash drive. I have a uh, uh, hopefully a Windows 7 bootable disk. So we'll see uh, see if it works. 
Okay, so it finished doing what it needed to do with the flat flash drive. So let's see what happens. Well, that looks promising. I probably should have done one of those self-test diagnos diagnostics and see if it got rid of that hard drive error. But, uh, looks like it's going to do well. So, I'll save you guys the boring part of uh, installing Windows 7. We'll see if I can be successful at this. Okay, that was pretty painless. To give you a reference, it's 2 p.m. now. So, uh, now I'm just going to install the drivers and utility disks. There's that button. I don't know if it's auto running or not. Yep. Okay, all the drivers are installed. I did have trouble installing the Wi-Fi driver and that was because I ended up installing uh, Windows 7 32-bit, not 64-bit like I thought. I don't know what the deal with that was, but it seems to be working fine. I'm not going to go back and try to change anything. So, uh, yeah, it was the hard drive. And so all the drivers are installed. And now I have a $60 Windows 7 laptop. So, thanks for watching.